Hey everyone, welcome, 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 happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Um, I am running a little behind, so I um, thank you for your patience. Um, I uh, just posted my tea review, so if you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out on my page. Taz is already here, um, and uh, before I join with Taz, um, I'm going to let her introduce herself as well, but I am really, really excited to speak with her. She is um, a cyber uh, cyber world specialist and expert, so um, it's going to be really exciting to hear some things from her. I just posted the tea review. I am drinking Don Quay Root tea. I am on a 45-day detox right now, so I'm drinking a lot of herbs and, um, and no animal products, no dairy. So... Um, Part of my detox um, system, I guess, if you will, right now, um, I am also taking some body enhancement herbs to help um, me keep some weight on while I'm on this uh, kind of liquid, liquid diet, if you will. Um, so I'm drinking Don Quay root to help to balance out my progesterone levels. So that is my tea. For today and we're about to get into this tea with Taz so let me join Taz in hi oh my goodness hi can you see me I see you perfectly how are you beautiful look at you you just like just radiate. You just radiate. I love it. I feel good today. I like took some time to go uh, for like a walk. I'm home in Queens. And so that's why I'm okay. like, with my niece and yeah. nephew and with family and communities. So yeah. I feel much better than yeah. I would say I have been feeling. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you're in New York. Um, how was the climate over there with everything going on? Um, you know, it's not not climate. In, I know you know not climate and weather, but like, what's what's the vibe? Like, what's how's everything going now with all of this stuff? I, you know, I, there with COVID is a separate conversation. I think New York is still struggling from a COVID aspect. Things are starting to open up a little bit more. Um, it's still like we went, my brother and I went to go see, that's how I know Keith, by the way, is through my brother. Um, okay. and so we went to go see some friends and like social distance and it was weird because I was like, damn, do we like hug? Do we not? And it's like an awkward, it, so as far as that and COVID, I think people are still adjusting as far yeah. as, um, you know, the genocide against black people in this country right now and what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I haven't really been on the outside world. I came here to, I came home to decompress and be with my family and I haven't really gone anywhere. Um, so yeah. it's hard for me to see, but you know, there was the big, big, um, protest at the Brooklyn museum for black trans lives, which was beautiful. There were so many people out there, but amazing. You know, like, it was amazing. And yeah also scary with covid and whatnot right yeah. because it's still such a, a large part of our narrative right now and then it's such a large part of how this bullshit ass government that we have is going to use and weaponize the work that people are doing mm -hmm. and narrate it a different way in the media and absolutely blame black lives matter for the uptick in covid i'm just waiting for it to happen i'm just waiting for them to come out and say the movement is the reason why COVID's higher. So yeah, yeah, sure. you know, the, I I'm I'm on the same wavelength. And before you know everything opened up, and I know Florida was one of the first states, and Georgia and California opened up, and you know here in LA. Um, there were actually a lot of protests. Um, people were actually like protesting that you know they were against the lockdown and mm. and it's like I understand that you know people were inside of their homes and we had to be quarantined but like I I feel like the bigger picture got washed over like 
the country did not open back up because COVID is, has disintegrated. The country opened back up because the government wants the economy to be boosted again because they don't want to keep paying people employment. They don't, you know, they don't, they want everybody to go back to work, but not go back to work because they're, um, they're compassionate about people's lives. They want everyone to go back to work so that the economy can get back going. So, with, and then the whole George Floyd thing happened and Breonna Taylor thing happened. So that kind of like washed out a lot of things. And so, excuse me, it, it, it almost became as big of um, a narrative as it is. It also became um, a distraction mm -hmm. for the government. And so people are really like so lackadaisical outside and like COVID is still running rampant. Like here in LA, I, I know California, in, in particular, I just read um, a news article just two days ago that California has spiked 40% in the COVID cases. And everybody's out at the restaurants and, you know, it's, it, that's, I want you to speak about that. I'm glad that we kind of segued into this conversation. But first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your time. For having me. I have been, um, I have been following your account, obviously through Keith, for some time now. But you, your your information is just so informative. And you. myself today, I'm going to be very, very transparent as I always am. But I probably am going to ask the most basic questions because good this this is not my lane. And I don't know how many people are watching, how up to date they are with technology, and you know how we are. Um, how we can control our narrative with like I'm probably going to ask very basic questions but I am such a student right now so can you just start with like let's let's start with the protesting right I know there were a lot of things that you posted that I reposted on my stories um, where you were sharing information on how we can protect ourselves those of us that do go out and protest or that attend protests how we can protect ourselves um, in this lieu of technology talk to us a little bit about that yeah, and I, I can give some background on what I do and, and who I am. Please, I guess. please. So, hello, everybody. I'm Taz. I'm so thankful to be here. Um, I am a cybersecurity specialist. I've been in the security field for about 10 years now. Um, I've been working at a technical capacity within, like, incidents response and architecture mapping for the past uh, four years now. Um, and I recently, about a year and a half ago, started doing a lot of research within, um, you know, data valence is what I call it. Um, and well, it's a coined term in the industry, but living in a surveillance society with the amount of data that we have, um, our lack of privacy and how does it affect black and brown people? How does it affect marginalized communities? And what's really happening with that information, which is like, um, what really gets me going the most because it's such um you know I, i'm very i talk like this so it's fucked it's it's really seriously we are in a in a place and there's such a big narrative around it but anyway so i, I talk about the philosophy around that and kind of the history around um how our data has been weaponized against us but from a security perspective you know i consult by day um, for a company and also during the day and by night. Um, I have an organization called Cyber Collective and I focus on kind of more consumer awareness for the everyday people, you know, um, for immigrants, for people of color, for artists, for creatives, you know, for the outcasts and just a place. It's, um, the goal is to have it be a one-stop shop of resources for people to go to. And I see Jihana actually just joined. She's also a security bay, and um, she has an ebook, which is awesome. But the goal is to highlight all of these other black and brown people in security that are doing amazing things and be able to have a place where people go and understand where they can go from there, right? Mm -hmm. And figure out what resources that they'd be able to find. Um, and, and we're just trying to simplify this route around like this entire dialogue around security and, and the understanding, because like you said, you know, I think people are just starting to kind of understand a lot of elements that are coming up, like bubbling up, like contact tracing with, that started happening with COVID and all of this information about surveillance and the way our information is being used 
with and against us. Um, and people are starting. Can we start? To, can we start there? Can you explain yeah. to us what contact tracing is? Yes. So contact tracing is what it sounds like, right? Like to be able to um, identify where you have been, um, who you have had contact with, and it's something that is being implemented into your phones. It's, I mean, if you've done the update on your Apple, um, on if you have iOS or Android, it should be rolled out already onto your devices. That's basically using Bluetooth to be able to um, allow location information um, mm -hmm. and be able to track how far or near you have been to somebody else that's been in contact or has had COVID in the past, right? Oh, and so wow. The idea and the intent is great, right? I, I think that there is a necessity of, there. there's such a good way that we can leverage data and the information that's already out there to be able to contain this massive massive pandemic that's going on right now and honestly it's, it's from a health perspective it's it's necessary right like if we do have a way to figure out to um you know quantify and qualify how people are coming in and out of places that's how uh, i believe in korea and in china so much of the containment was able to happen because of the amount of surveillance that's out there and the thing about contact tracing is everyone's like, oh, my God, contact tracing. I'm like, yo, your shit's been traced. <laughs> You've been being traced for the dumbest amount of time ever since yeah. you had a phone. Um, yeah. One of my favorite books is called Future Crimes. And it's by Future Crimes. Future Crimes. Future Crimes. Okay. Okay. Said, there's a chapter and it's called uh, uh, Mobile Devices, Snitches in Your Pockets. Right, like your cell phone is a is a snitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's giving away all of this information, and so yeah. that's so much of the reason why I started posting content. I guess because um, you know, it's as a security professional, I definitely get judged in the security space for making the content that I make on Instagram because it's a bunch of white people in my industry, <laughs> and then they don't really understand how to reach the masses, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so. But it's this element of us just really not understanding the extent of what's going on with our data, what's really happening within social media platforms, and how integral it is for us to start just asking a little bit more questions before we just are quick to click something or quick to download something. Um, I call it convenience clicking. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to move us into um, the age of like conscious clicking and conscious downloading. So mm -hmm. my big thing is kind of bringing the element of mindfulness and like empathy and vulnerability into a space that is so technical. Um, because how else can we get it to relate to people if we can't relate to, you know, how it's truly affecting us and how it affects our mental health and how the information that we're consuming I mean there's just so much that goes into yeah. it um yeah and I know at my I go off in tangents in my brain all the time because I'm so into all of this but as far yeah. as you know conscious clicking and whatnot we are at a place now where we've given up most of our our, our rights over as far as data is concerned so from a privacy mm -hmm. perspective we're working backwards um there are almost no national i mean there is no national or federal law protecting consumer data right now mm -hmm. um all of our data is being you know aggregated distributed and then solicited to other organizations and there are big companies that are making money off of our personal information and we've just been continuously giving away all of our rights because we just we're just so quick to click to click for convenience like oh I need this I'm going to download it or I need to get this done and unfortunately there's so much that you like you can't avoid right like some people are like what if you know, I, I didn't want to download this, but I had to, I needed it for work. And it's so unfortunate that, you know, certain programs are implemented in certain organizations and spaces and unbeknownst to them, that program or that tool might be taking all of that information and selling that data. 
that, right? Mm -hmm. um, our cell phone providers, any internet service provider, Sprint, T-Mobile, mm -hmm. AT&T, mm -hmm. they have been giving our information to the federal government and law enforcement since like 2000 and since the Patriot Act. Yeah. Um, right? Like none of our information is private. And mm -hmm. it le it leads into, it's um if it's not private, if my information it's already out there i don't got anything to hide i don't really care i'm just going to continue to do the things that i'm doing and what people don't understand it's like okay you don't care but you're an advocate of, for the black and brown community and so if you're if you're here caring for the physical security of somebody then why the hell are you not going to care about the digital security about somebody all your information mm -hmm. out there Right, like the apathy is so strong across the board within this new wave. Like people are just so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I, I think a huge part of it too. I'm sorry to, I, no, please. Sorry, a, a huge part of it too is just I just want to throw this little piece in. It's it's still a part of this whole microwave society, you know instant gratification and 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 i too on some levels and i'm listening to you and i am at fault about a lot of things that you're talking about as well you know what i mean and right. that's why i wanted to bring you on because there's so many things that we do do that we're unaware of and unknowingly um are you know not holding ourselves accountable for like you said how can you be a part of the physical plane of the black lives matter movement or you know the the oppression of black and brown people but digitally we aren't aware of how we're actually helping the same system that's killing our people we're assisting them in a digital way so talk to us a little bit about how what are some things that we can do to actually um protect ourselves i mean it sounds like the first step is to maybe read some yeah, of the awareness, right that, that's yeah. the number yeah. one that i tell people it's i want to give a quick fix and say like hey boom 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 these are the three tangible or five tangible things that you can do um it really like it starts with mindfulness and understanding what you're doing and and i think an another thing is being curious like if you can just start asking questions if there's an application and for everything's free everything about the app is free it's a great app it's a great tool you should start asking like why is this shit free mm -hmm. why is it free and then go and read the terms and conditions they every single organization after gdpr um was launched by the eu because in europe they're protecting the data of their um citizens and they oh really them, yeah so there's something called gdpr compliance that was pushed out globally in order to protect the data of European citizens, right, in the EU. And so all these other countries had to become compliant. And there was like this huge audit that was happening. This this was launched, I, I believe, three years ago, GDPR came out. Um, and America went batshit in trying to, um, you know, be compliant to GDPR, but we don't have anything national, a federal law protecting our people. And that's because America is built on the bullshit that it's built on it's systemically racist the internet is systemically racist right mm -hmm. i mean google for example that that's another thing from an awareness piece like do not believe everything that you see on your screen do not, I, I would honestly question everything because the the one thing that you can 100 percent expect on your screen and know is everything that reaches your screen is manipulated data it's manipulated information and manipulated isn't necessarily a bad word right that's just the mm -hmm. actual term that that information that it's manipulated in a way so that it can reach your screens right reach our screens and if something is able to be manipulated to reach your screen you should know that it's being manipulated to reach your screen if that makes sense right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so when you google things and you i'm reading this book called the algorithms of oppression right now by Safia noble and my mind is blown because of the things that i'm learning about the history of our internet you know she 
um, looked up black girls in 2010 on the internet. And it was just all like porn that came up when you Google black girls. And they had to work so hard to get that off of the internet. When you looked up good hair versus bad hair, if you Google professional versus unprofessional, just see what images come up. And this is our internet that we're going to for information and people Google some shit and then they repost it. It's all based off of ads. It's all based off of sponsored ads and money. It's capitalism and you're being pushed all of this information based off of what, you know, the oppressors want us to see. And that's just the real, it's just facts. Mm -hmm. And so in order to be secure, right? And there are two separate conversations. So security is one thing and privacy is another thing. You can be a very secure company, but not have any privacy, or you can be a very secure individual. And you're, I'm a secure individual, but I am very public. So I don't have a lot of private information, right? Um, and you might be very private, but you might not have a security established within your devices and stuff, right? You might not post a lot, but um, you don't have good password management, right? And so that's why you become vulnerable. So to answer your question as far as something tangible that people can do, the first and foremost thing that I really recommend people do is get a password management tool. Because even though it's so simple and it is, um, oh, someone's asking the name of the I book. Know that I know impression. Safia, S-A-F-I-Y-A, you'll find it. It's that's Yeah, I, and that's I, I just want to, I know that um, famous audios, a lot of people are asking, but Taz, after we're done, if you don't mind, can you just text me the name of those two books that you mentioned? And when I repost this on my page, this video, I'm going to put the name of the books on the page so that people can actually go back to it and see. But go, go, go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. Cut you off. Um, no, it's okay. And also after this, it, everything's on the website, uh, cybercollective.org, the books to read, information about surveillance, information about how to protect yourself during protests from a digital perspective, um, how to become more private and more secure. So it's a repository of information. Um, and we're growing and adding more info in there. But I, that's why I launched Cyber Collective as quickly as I did right now, like relaunch. I had this whole like three, six month plan of what I was going to do. But the information needs to be in one place and um, like findable or searchable, right? So I wanted to put put it out there. So it's all there and I can definitely um, send you the link and you can share it. And there are a ton more books than just those two that I really recommend. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tag your page. Um, I follow it already. So if you guys aren't already following, make sure you're following Taz and I'll reiterate this at the end, but I'm also gonna tag Taz's um, collective page on this post on my page. Um, but I just want her to be able to regurgitate this information to us live yeah. while we have her here. So I'm not, we're not ignoring everyone who's on the live. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm just, I'm in awe listening to everything that you're speaking about. So, and I know that your time is very, I value everyone's time. So I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm taking notes and I'll tag everything at the post so people can go back to it on my page and um, they can see everything that you're talking about, be able to click on it. This is why I have Tuesday tea with Mel because we need to expand our communities and there's so many people out there there's so much information out there and I think that's the one thing that's great about social media mm. is that we're able to connect and we're actually getting information coming directly at us opposed to I mean everyone is not reading books you know um right now my I don't know is that it might be my, I don't know if it's my phone you know yesterday and I'm sidebarring really quick. All of, you know, T-Mobile service That's went it. out yesterday. Did you know T-Mobile service? What what was that about? I like, I, I, I'm I always questioning. The, good. Always question. Um, I haven't talked to anybody in the community yet about what happened. It could have been a DDoS attack. And a DDoS attack is basically a denial of service attack where there are a bunch of bots that overpower and overtake um, one website or network and basically create so much noise and a denial of service. So then other people that are trying to use the service are no longer mm -hmm. able to. Mm -hmm. um, and 
they also recently found a vulnerability within um, 5G, right? So I think it has something to do with that. And it also has something to do with um, threat actors that are continuously trying to get as much information as possible. And right now, especially, I think from a surveillance perspective too, I wonder if it's something that has to do with the government and more information that they're trying to get out of us and call me a conspiracy theorist, but that's the first thing I thought about. Yeah. First thing I thought about. Mm -hmm. And you connect the dots. And once you're aware, Monique, your, your life is, I'm sorry, but I'm ruining a lot of lives today. You're not, you you can't unsee the shit. And then you're, you can't, you physically can't unsee things and you start questioning everything. Yeah. You know, there's something called deep fake technology, which is also another mind blowing. It's called what? Deep fake technology. So it's like never heard of it. Tell me, please. And it's you can't not see it. So deep fake technology is created to be like there was I don't know if you remember, there was that video that came out of Obama um, of him saying some things and people were like, this isn't real. And then there was one that came out of Mark Zuckerberg. It was a couple of years ago or maybe even last year or something, I can't remember, but deep fake technology is basically a method or uh, a, like a method of creating uh, false videos and they use something called a GAN, tech, a GAN method um, where they input a bunch of in- images and then it outputs the facial and, 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 mat- and it matches up. So you basically have a dummy that will sit and say somebody, I wanted to make a deep fake technology of somebody People tell me I look like uh, Kourtney Kardashian, so let's let's go with that. Say I wanted to make a fake video about Kourtney Kardashian. And so what I would do is I would create a video. I would figure out whatever script that I want to make, and I would sit down with my background the way that I want, and I would just make my video, right? And it would be me talking. And so what the GAN method does is then I would insert images, all of the different images that that exist about of Kourtney Kardashian, I would insert them into this tool. And then it would spit out and it would match the images and all of the facial recognition, any movement to all of the movement of my face. Okay. And it would match it perfectly where it's almost completely unrecognizable by the human eye. Um, and because so much audio already exists and there's there, I mean, what do, what do the Kardashians have? Like fucking 15 years of their information and their lives on the internet. And so that audio is then used anything that you could either use technology to change my, the voice to match Kourtney Kardashian's voice, or you can use her, her audio and things that she said and recompile it in the video to basically match whatever you're trying to say and then add different levels of inflection and tonality. And so then it's completely undetectable by the human eye, which is wild, right? And there are tools that help detect deep fake technology, but the more tools come out, like the more tools that come out to detect it, the smarter the technology becomes, right? And the harder it becomes to detect it. So with any good technology that comes out, always know that there's a bad technology that also comes out with mm-hmm. it to counter that. Um, but yeah, so like the deep fake technology is wild and it's based off of the, and, and people just, you know, we're so quick to reshare things and people will send me things. They're like, oh my God, did you see this? I'm like, I gotta do my research and make sure that this video is even real because you know, if something's out of character of somebody to say, and all of a sudden there's something on the internet, you just can't assume that you you cannot assume what you're seeing on the internet is real, unfortunately. Um, and it sucks. <laughs> and once you start, I mean, you start, I I am blown. I am blown away right now. Like this, I mean, my goodness, it's it's very informative super informative and I I'm so grateful for you know that being educated on it and I'm sure everyone who's on the live are appreciative as well but it's it's also very scary it's it can be very intimidating you know it's, as much as we are connecting on social media and we use our phones so much it's like what what there there are there's no security we, 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 we're not safe. Are we safe? We're not no, we're really, not. we're not safe. We're so there are actually people that sit and do this deep face. That there's they, actually, yeah, they create the videos and stuff. I mean, like an, so a live, a real live person does this. 
takes I mean, the time to, to create these videos. Do. Yeah, of course. I mean, oh I mean with, the, with the different scams that are out there, right, it's called phishing attacks. But you know when you get those weird-ass phone calls from the IRS or you get those weird phone calls and it's somebody, like, speaking in Chinese or you get email, like, random spam emails and stuff like that, all of those are methods of um, – phishing methods and methods of manipulation to try to get people to click something so that you can gain access. So there's like actual attacks that are happening. And there's, there's also just like spyware that exists based off of, you know, tracking done by cookies and different websites that we visit that, that enable certain tracking and um, spyware tools to be implemented onto your device. And they can monitor your keystrokes. They can monitor your camera. They can monitor your microphone. And I mean, even our social media on Instagram, on Facebook, on anything that you have, once you enable access to your microphone, once you enable access to your photos, they have access to every single fucking photo that you have in your phone. They have access to everything that you are saying at all times. It's not like it, it shuts off when you turn the app off. No, <laughs> it stays on the entire time. That's why when you go on your phone, you're like, oh, I was just talking about diapers. And now all of a sudden I see all these advertisements about diapers, right? Um, it's just, and so that started from the aspect of better advertising, right? But like now, and it's just the amount of mass manipulation that's happening with our data, right? And when you consider, there's just so many different layers to this, Monique. We can go so I, deep. I'm like, so I'm like, Taz, we will need probably a part two of all this. Because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you're you're speaking to, to us. And well, I'm just going to say me. And you're speaking on a very like surface level you haven't even i don't even think you've gone deep because no. i've listened to, <laughs> I, I know you haven't because i've listened to your other conversations with other um you being a guest on other people's podcasts and the, and the things that you have talked about with those other people i'm i'm like i don't even know those questions to even ask taz so that's why i even started I'm like this is going to be so basic but like this is this information is just it's it's wow that, uh, the biggest thing that I recommend here for anybody that's joined and for a message for you to be able to continue to um, give out into the community is, is like you said, right? Like you asked, what can we do? And it's just being aware and mindful and questioning everything that you see and making sure that, you know, just understand that the internet was built by people that don't look like us and don't want the best for us, right? The internet was built by people that live in privilege and maybe they're good hearted people. There are good hearted people everywhere that are still ignorant and racist, right? That doesn't mean that they're not, right? And so the internet was built by those people. So all of the tools and everything that is affecting us, it's because it was, it was built by people that cannot relate to us. And mm -hmm. so know that the way that pro propaganda was leveraged, like think of everything that we've learned in history and in school, even though all of that is kind of still inaccurate, but just from the, from the eyes of like propaganda, it's the same element, it's all propaganda, but now it's at a mass manipulation level. It's so strong and it, and it's reaches so far and wide. People become outraged based off of a viral video, like, but that viral video could be fake. Right. If you watch, I mean, everybody on this call, whether it's tonight, whether it is later this week, and this is also on the Cyber Collective website, please watch uh, the documentary, The Great Hack. I highly, highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. It talks about the 2016 election and Cambridge Analytica and the case against Cambridge Analytica and what they did with Facebook in using the messages that people send to each other, the voice notes that people send to each other, everything that you've ever clicked, touched, searched, or looked at on the internet, and using that in developing categories. Um, and I'm posting a video about this today. It's a, I, I did a live like last week about how our data is weaponized. I actually got shadow banned on Instagram afterward. I'm still shadow banned on Instagram right now. My content is not shareable outside of the echo chambers of my immediate algorithmic bubble. So if you share something and somebody in your network that's not connected with me, they probably won't be able to find my, my page right now. It's not showing up in any hashtags. And that's something that um, Instagram just admitted to today, I think it was, or yesterday or something. Mm -hmm. they, they made the news. Um, 
but shadow banning has been happening against people of color and against black people on Instagram. And that's why there are like so many different algorithmic discrepancies between different people that are, you know, providing the same type of information on this medium. And that's because again, this shit was made by fucking white people and they, it's built on oppressive systemic racism. And that's just, that's just the truth. And when we consider these things and, and, you know, just constantly remember that, like always remember that. And I think that we have like removed a veil of comfort off of us. And, you know, the, yes, there's good stuff about social media, but how is it affecting us at the end of the day? And if I answer these questions, how is it going to be used against me later? So what Cambridge Analytica did, you know, all those Facebook surveys that ask you the most detailed questions in the entire world, like, how are you feeling? Are you anxious? Are you depressed? I mean, there are just millions and millions of, of different surveys. And they were all a lot of them, most of them and specific to there are specific ones that Cambridge Analytica pushed out on Facebook. Um, in relation to how uh, to aggregate data to see how people psychologically are thinking about the election, then they made categories. And the one category that they made that blew my mind was called the persuadables. They called it the persuadables because these are people that are quick to click, quick to share, and quick to change their opinion because they're not actually doing any deep research into anything. Research. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they targeted these people and they sent them very pinpointed messages. And that's how the 2016 election happened. Right. If you watch this and you see the way that specific information was shared, I mean, there's a case study about the and they ran. They, they literally talk about the case study um, between Trinidad and uh, I forget, but two West Indian slash Caribbean places where there's a divide between the Indian people mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the Afro-Caribbean people, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a huge divide and um, a lot of hostility between those two groups. Cambridge Analytica created fake protests for people to join. People joined those protests and all that information was was gathered like they controlled so many different movements even with the black lives matter movement they talk about that in this documentary so many protests for the black lives matter movement were created by fucking russians for us to basically go get involved and then have something else happen to switch the narrative and then how that yes. and, and then and basically have it reach screens differently and you know, my, my husband's white, and we were talking about this, everything that's happening right now, right? Um, and he's in a relationship with me. So he's been, you know, I wouldn't have married him if he wasn't awake to, to these elements and things. But you know, he was so shocked that his friend circle and within his, um, not friend circle, but work friend circle, there are people that had no idea that George Floyd died and that this happened. Because there is a huge community of people that don't have cable television, they mm -hmm. use streaming, and they only follow a specific demographic, demographic of people on social media. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that don't watch the news. And so a lot of our news outlets now are through social media. Same, I don't watch the news either. I get all my information based off of specific people that I follow to get information yes. from. Yes. And so imagine if it's a bunch of white people just following a bunch of other white people, they're not getting the information, then they're stuck in their algorithmic bubble at their echo chamber. And because again, the internet is built by the oppressors, they're not giving them the information that they need to get. It's not reaching into these other algorithmic bubbles. That's why I've been pushing people like, okay, you're sharing on Instagram about anti-racism rhetoric, like share it on LinkedIn, share it on Facebook, share it in like within platforms where we can break the algorithms to have a, a wider audience. Um, mm -hmm. And so like this, this documentary, you have to watch it, The Great Hack. It really breaks down the way that all of this, our, just how our data is being weaponized against us. Um, and, you know, that's a privacy conversation. And how I guess a lot of people might ask like, okay, then how do we stay safe and what can I do? Um, 
and I like to give that takeaway and talk a little bit about the things that we can do tangibly right now. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from being aware and being cognizant that this is happening, one thing that I highly recommend that I said earlier is that password management. And the second thing that I really recommend is reading terms and conditions on, on things before you accept. Um, and when you are leveraging, say you want to get a, a password management tool, paying for a password management tool and using your dollars to pay for it. Because a lot of times mm -hmm. tools are actual scams where you put in your passwords and it's not actually a, a vetted password management company. Um, yeah. and, all, and look to different security professionals or security websites, right? Uh, Wired is not a security website, but they have a lot of security information. Um, I trust them, the information that they put, put out. Uh, there's like a dark web reading. Just, if you look up security blogs, you can get a lot of information on these cybersecurity blogs because they're providing, you know, the different um, details around what tools are better than others. But I highly recommend paying for it. Um, I also have a list of password management tools that I recommend on my page. So if anybody okay. wants to go there, um, there's that. And I also have a video about it too, if there are additional questions. But um, the next thing that I really recommend is getting a VPN tool, which this is, a lot of people in my industry will say bullshit doesn't matter, right? And then there's the element of no, it does work. And what a VPN tool is, it's called a virtual private network. And it basically creates a secret tunnel. And it allows you to communicate and it, it allows internet traffic to pass without being detected by other people. Um, and without being uh, detected, it's, it's an encrypted route of traffic. Um, and it allows a lot of anonymity, basically. And what that helps with is adware or the spyware that we have on our laptops or like when we go on to different websites because we're using a VPN to like search on websites and stuff like that, it won't be able to detect what device we're actually working from. It basically creates anonymity, like a bubble around your device and, and your IP address. And it allows you to kind of um, not be as susceptible to downloading any type of malware on your device. And so mm -hmm. having a VPN tool is really helpful, but again, paying for it, right? It's really important. But what I'm struggling and that, with- And that's just something we can find in our, like the app store, the normal app store. Yes, and I have an article that I wrote um, also about about like choosing a good VPN, but there are so many different articles out there. Like if you just Google how do I choose a good VPN, there there are a lot of different articles out there that, that will give you the information. The only yeah. thing that I struggle with right now in recommending these tools, and that's why I'm a cyber collective website, I posted an article about how to build your own VPN, which is really oh, hard. Wow. Um, wow. Because who do we trust? Yeah. How do I trust that this private company, because what happens is all of these different encrypted, these companies that are providing encrypted resources for us, password management tools or um, this a VPN, right? They're owned by somebody. These are private companies. And what are they mm -hmm. doing with your data? Because everyone yeah. has a price. You yeah. Know? Shit, yeah. I probably got a price. <laughs> like an, like an, like an, a dollar amount, right? Like, if you are an individual at the end of the day and, and say the federal government offers you millions of dollars to give up consumer data, that's how it happens, you know, and all of the, and so people are like, what password management tool should I recommend? I've been recommending Keeper Security, but Keeper Security hasn't said shit about Black Lives Matter. So now mm. I'm like, damn. I don't know if I trust Keeper Security. Yeah. I, don't know what yeah. VPN, I don't know what to recommend people anymore because I don't fucking trust anybody anymore. Yeah. And I don't trust that our information and our data is safe. Like, you know, it's, it, this is going to sound a little bit extreme, but it's like almost like digital. It's like the way that they um, traded or enslaved people. It's like they're doing that with our data now. Right? And, and so I'm trying to figure out with a bunch of really smart people, how do we build something on our own? And so that's to come. I'm trying. To so I have two. I have two questions for you. Yeah, one of please. one of the questions. First of all, 
Girl, I... <laughs> We're gonna have to smoke some weed after this call. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot. First of all, you got to let your husband know that you have a new partner. Hello, because we're gonna have to be on another conversation. Yes. Um. So one of the questions is is from um one of the viewers, and um it's a question that I had too, and I know it's probably more than what. There's probably more to it than what you can kind of just blurt out in a second. So the first question is, when, when, what do we look for before we, what are some things that should jump out to us before accepting um, terms and conditions on an app? What are some of the little things that we can just like, be like, it'll, it should like pop a red flag for us? That's the first question. Second question is, and I think you kind of answered it already, um, you are part of the trusted collective. Have you thought about creating a VPN security web, you know, website? Do you have, um, not a GoFundMe, but do you have something going on where we as a community can actually start to invest in something like this to, to, to a website or to a security, a VPN, uh, software that you create? Because it goes back to, not just Black Lives Matter, but like we have to recycle our dollars to businesses and to people that we number one trust, number two that look like us, number three that have the same morals and values mm -hmm. that we have. So, do are you creating something, or your group of people are creating something that we as a community can can donate to? Because if it's like I'm, I'm this is this is a, a surface layer for me. So if you don't trust. <laughs> If you don't trust a, a website, right. you don't trust. I'm like, I'm, I'm with Taz. I don't trust you. So, how can we support you in the group that you're doing? So, those are two questions. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. The first one was again. Um, the first one was, what are some of the red flags that we jump okay, out to us flags. that we should jump out um, before we accept term, terms and conditions on a software? So, yeah. you know, I did this. I had, I like made this video a few years ago and I, I have to find it. It might be on my page actually, so I can't remember, but I was reading through different privacy policies. Like I did, I read Airbnb's privacy policy one day and I was like, oh my God, like, Oh, holy shit. They have so much information, so much data. So if you look at the terms that, so now companies are posting and because CCPA, California is always with it and always like coming out and protecting consumer data. What's CCPA? Um, so CCPA is the California Consumer Privacy Act. And, okay. Um, CCPA is something that if, if anybody has time today that's on this call and is interested, highly recommend looking up and learning a little bit about um, because the CCPA, especially it allows people to take ownership of their data and you can actually submit a, um, I forget the right word to use, but basically like a petition, not a petition, but submit a request and, or not a request either, but to say that um, your data was mis uh, mishandled or improperly used and you can get reparations for that you can get $750 as a consumer and you don't actually have to have tangible evidence to show that your data was misused because most people are misusing your data right mm -hmm. so definitely there are reparations and there's money that you can get um, that allows you to kind of take ownership of your data again but what's happening right now is because like uh, so CCPA rolled this out and it basically requested that all organizations visibly let the consumer know that hey we're going to distribute your data are you okay with this and then there's an added layer of we're going to distribute your data are you okay with this and also if you're not you can still use our services in our website which is new still kind of rolling out not everybody has rolled it out properly um and so that's helpful because now when you look up different privacy policies, there's there's the terms of service. Some organizations and websites, and I'll use Sweetgreen as an example because I um, did, like looked into their privacy policy a few years ago. So if you Sweetgreen has terms of services, you click on that, and if you just control find or whatever device you're on, just type in privacy policy, and it'll take you. They'll they'll have a table of contents. And it will go to the privacy policy and you can click that or some websites the privacy policy is separate than the terms of service i recommend reading both because 
and you don't necessarily have to read and understand the um the legal language that's on there and it's honestly pretty um digestible because you'll read it and it'll be like oh my god <laughs> it's like we it'll say like third party um terms and services privacy policy conditions what we're doing with your data and it basically breaks down and says we're collecting this 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 and this and then it says who are we sharing your data with and then it says like our partners our third party partners um and it, it, a lot of these organizations they'll um set it up to make it seem like they're doing you a benefit by <laughs> taking this data and distributing it um and that's not the case and it, it might be in some cases right but not the case all the time and so as soon as you go into the terms and conditions into the privacy pol or the privacy policy the table of contents should very clearly show you where to Sorry guys, I think the um the phone is catching up. Okay, there yeah, we go. I lost you for a second. People calling me That's... right now, and it's my husband. I'm like, you know, I'm. Doing You're, a You're a hot commodity, Cass. You're a hot commodity, girl. Yes. Um, I do have a call at five o'clock, so I have a hard stop at five, unfortunately. Oh no, um, this it's only an hour, it, and actually, we're gonna cut no, down. No. I. Uh, hopefully before before we go like and, and you can finish what you were saying but i would love to do a part two of this with yeah, you I'm in. oh I'm yeah in. i'm in for yeah. sure um and so see the terms and conditions they're pretty visible um i can also maybe uh, that might be a, a newsletter topic that i post i i just started sending out a newsletter on a weekly basis. I started last week with like everything going on. So if you go to cybercollective.org, you can get the newsletter. And I have a, a couple of different um, things to share this week that I think are relevant to what's happening right now. Um, but and, and I, I'll highlight our call and that CCP or the terms and conditions piece. As far as what we're working on, so my goal with Cyber Collective, because I work in the security industry and stuff, and I have to do, like, there's the during the day things that I take care of and whatnot. And because so many people are already doing cool and good things, I want, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to, I want to work with people that are already doing it. I actually mm -hmm. have been working with this amazing woman. Um, she's a black woman. She is a lawyer and she has been working on a tool to help people gain awareness around privacy policies. And we are working together right now to, there's a consumer version and an enterprise version. And she's such a bad, we just like FaceTime yesterday and we're like, oh my God, we're on the same page. Because there's so many, like uh, few and far between of our kind, right? With the same moral mm -hmm. compass, with the same level of knowledge, and I guess the drive to do better. Um, so there's, there's her and she's creating this tool and I think I'm going to try to work with her to figure out some, some more next steps of what we can do to help people. Um, right now, as far as what I'm building, I'm focused on first creating a one-stop shop of where people can go and what to do, right? Okay, I'm a small business. I have questions around cybersecurity to implement into my organization or right or like a, a risk factor in my business where do i go what do i do if you go to the cyber collective website not yet but eventually i'm going to say hey are you a small business owner this is where you can go and what cyber collective will do will point you to somebody named if you guys want to follow her her name is cyber farida i love her she's so awesome she is a um black woman that has a security awareness company and you know these these women exist these people exist and i would then ask these people that are looking to have best practices implemented go to cyber free this page so cyber collective is a collective of all of the people doing the work and i'm going to highlight that um as far as figuring out encryption tools i have not been sleeping i've just been i've been uh smoking and creating and ideating i just be sitting in, in my in my office by myself at three in the morning <laughs> just trying to figure out how to make things happen yeah um, let me type in the women that people should follow i am Gina. yeah if you do that and then we can just pin it and then i'll also put it put it on the page um i know you have to go 
I, I think you said cyber cyber for Rita. There we go. Cybercollective.org. So Farida posts so much good information all the time. She just posted something about um, the Black Lives Matter scams that are out right now. That So like hackers just are so quick to jump on to different things. Um, and, and she just shared to her company is called Sukuba. She's incredible. I am Jihana. Um, her name is Jihana, but her handle is I am Jihana. And she's also another black woman in security. And she has an ebook that basically helps you um, understand the, like, you know, the consumer level information about security that you need. She posts content on a single day about real life things that you can do. Like she just posted something today about, or the other day about encrypting your phone. She posted something about banking apps today. Um, so these, these women are providing that information. Um, so I'm, I'm working with, uh, and the goal of the collective is if you're on this page, if you're on this live right now and you're a techie, you're a developer and you want to get involved and help, I have a Google form up on my website. If you want to get psycho with me, that's what it's called, get psycho, because it's cyber. Oh, I love it. Um, I love it. Please join. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out to develop a group of people that want to create, like, I want to create a new internet pretty much. I want to develop a new internet. I want to develop a new type of um, platform or social media platform that we would be able to use where, you know, people have the power and the control of their data. Um, Angela mm -hmm. Benton is another woman that I follow. She just came out with a tool. Called I, started, I started following her through Keith as well. Yep. Angela Benton. Um, she is in the tech space and she just put something out with Issa Rae. Um, I haven't looked into the tool, but she's an, a huge advocate for privacy. Um, and she is awesome in, in the work that she does. And she's been in the tech space for a really, really long time. Um, the one thing that I recommend that people do, though, like follow. It's good to follow people that are talking about things, right? But follow people that are actual cybersecurity professionals. Follow people that are actual privacy professionals. Um, you know, there's a lot of conversation and a lot of hype around the, these topics. So people kind of like jump on to things. Um, oh, Jihana's on this page. You should always yeah. bring Jihana onto T because she, she Hi, is. Hi, Jihana. Would love to have you. Would love to love to have you as a guest to come and speak with us. This is how I got connected with Taz. So thank you. Yeah, and we will sure. be, be following Johanna, and I'll also be tagging Johanna on this post. Perfect. And um, so I have to jump, unfortunately. If anybody has questions, if anybody, I know Johanna's always open to taking questions as well. She has her ebook. Farida's open to taking questions. I'm open to taking questions. There's a whole community of just like all these baddies, to be honest. I love, <laughs> I love, I love, and. Shout out to all the women. We are holding yes. it down as always. I yeah. love it. Tess, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so thank much. Thank you so you. much. Have a great week, and I'll be back in touch with you. So much love to you. So much love to you. And I hope okay. everybody take some time to just be easy if they can. Yeah. yeah. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Um. You guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I, I'm, I'm thanking you for being here, but to be honest with you, this was the most poignant conversation. Like I learned so much. I'm, I'm, I'm like in overload right now because Taz get, just offered a plethora of information. So if you guys aren't following Taz, make sure you go follow Tech with Taz. Don't go. I guess <laughs> I have, I have three kids. My oldest daughter, she is. Um, babysitting for me um but um we will do this again jihana if you are still on here i would love 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 to to set up a time for you to come on and um chat with the community um did you guys enjoy this uh we're, a lot of you seem to be more informative than i have been about this information how did you guys feel about all of this do you guys want to have to ask back you want to have some more people back like do you have any feedback at all did you guys enjoy the live? Hi, Brian. Of course, let's chat. Okay, Gianna, thank you so much. I'm going to DM you when we finish, and I'm also going to tag you.
um, I am Jihana. I'm going to tag you on this post. I have 28 seconds left. You guys, let's leave in love. Let's leave in light. Let's leave in peace. Um, let's stay aware. Continue to ask questions. Let's continue to support each other. Um, I love you. I'm loving myself. Love each other back. And have an amazing, amazing rest of the week. And thank you for tuning in to Tuesday Tea with Mo and Gianna. I'll be reaching out to you. All right, guys. Peace.